So today I'm having a chat to Nicholas van Veek, who is from Cyber. And I'm, I'm so grateful that you made time for us today. Um, and what I, what, I, what I want this discussion to be about, or, or what I'm wanting to provide for our students, is uh, more exposure to alternative, or in students' minds, it's alternative professional qualifications in South Africa, what it's about, uh, you know, what their options are, what their career study options, et cetera, are. So we're going to have a chat all about uh, cyber and what it is and, you know, what, what opportunities it offers. So again, Nicholas, thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, I really appreciate, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah. So to start off with, can you give us a little bit of a background on um, you and your role at, uh, at cyber and uh, your, your professional background? So I'm the CEO of Cyber. Cyber is the Southern African Institute for Business Accountants. Um, South Africa is blessed with about 10 professional accounting bodies. So students have a plethora of bodies to choose from. Um, and it's an important decision. It kind of sets the tone for the rest of your, of your life and your career development. So Cyber has, um, it's a national body, uh, but we also have an office in Namibia. Okay. Uh, as well as through our international partners, we represented in about 22 other countries. Okay. Uh, from Brazil to Japan. Okay. And um, so Cyber offers uh, designations for students. Once they've completed the uh, commerce degrees and the articles, then we offer them four designations, uh, starting from actually mapping their career development. So mm. uh, all accountants have to start at some uh, entry level mm. uh, as a junior financial accountant or a financial administrator uh, they develop into financial managers and from there they might develop into a financial director or CFO and for those that don't want to do the corporate route we offer them a way to start their own accounting firms if they're more oh. entrepreneurial minded okay so in terms of those four categories we've got four designations okay um, All so right. our entry designation is a business accountant essay that's right. for your junior accountant okay uh, then we've got a mid-tier designation for financial managers yeah. which is our cba essay certified business accountant okay and then our flagship designation is once your career gets you to the financial director level yeah it's a cfo essay okay All so right. it's three designations for accountants that want to go into commerce yeah. and one designation for those guys that's more entrepreneurial that want to start their own firms and the designation for them, we call a BAP essay, Business Accountant in Practice essay. Ah, okay, all right. And um, I'm assuming all of, all of that information is on, on your website as well for, for students. So I'll put a link, yes. I'll put a link yes, in please. the post so that they can go. The website is www.cyber.org.za. Okay, so how many members, how many me cyber members are there in, in, in South Africa? We were quite fortunate. We started in 19, we were registered as a company in 1987. Okay. Uh, there's a nice history about the accounting profession in South Africa. Uh, everything started in the 80s. Yeah. Um, most of the bodies that we see now in SA got originated in the 80s, the 80s. due to some okay. legislation. The legislature changed the law to allow a new form of corporate entity. Oh. So uh, you had a Companies Act that the students yeah. might be familiar with yeah. and also a Close Corporation Act. Yeah. And those two statutes um, then provided for auditing as a specialization yeah. for companies yeah. and a whole profession for non-auditors. Right. Uh, for those that don't want to go the audit route, but more business advisory route. Okay. So Cyber uh, populates the space for the non-audit route yeah. um, and was registered in 87 and uh, then we went through a little bit of a hibernation <laughs> for a few years um, and redesigned uh, our strategy in uh, the late in 2012. Okay. And since 2012, we've grown now to about 9,000 members. Okay. We're the third largest in South Africa, the fastest growing. Right. Um, about 70% of the membership is uh, 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 black. Right. So we're the most diverse. And I think we're also the, the youngest. Uh, uh, in me from a member uh, perspective, right. So our average age of a member is about thirty-five. Okay. We, if you consider the other institutes, yeah. they're more on the older side. Yeah, uh, more about here in the fifties and so forth. Yes. 
Okay, that, 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 that's quite interesting. So um, in terms of the qualification process, um, how, would a, how would a student qualify as a cyber member um, in terms of their academic requirements and mm. the, practical, the practical requirements? Mm. When we redesigned Cyber in 2012, we, we started by looking what employers want from accountants right. and what the actual situation is for people being accountants in South Africa. Right. Yeah. So we didn't say, let's, let's create an ideal mm. and then let's force everybody to fit our ideal of what we think an accountant should be. Yeah. So when we engage employers, we saw that um, people end up in the accounting department having studied many different things. Uh, you would find um, people studying teaching or studying psychology or studying the law and then end up in the finance department. Yeah. It's like a catchment area. If you don't know what you want to do with your career, you end up in accounting. That's true. Which is a true story. Um, yeah, and I think one that we need to acknowledge to be that that's reality. Yeah. So we said, but if that's the case, why don't we recognize everybody that's working in the finance department? Right. Uh, and that's, that's the way the designation business accountant SA comes in. Okay. So for that entry level designation, if you're working in a finance department uh, at the junior level, uh, finance administrator, bookkeeper, uh, junior accountant, uh, then we say, listen, if you have a degree and you're working in that area, then we do a competency assessment okay. uh, and issue you with a designation. Okay. So I think we're the, the only accounting body in SA that allows people to be accountants that didn't study accounting yeah. as, a, as a specialist subject but they've developed themselves into that area yes i think i think that's so i think that's so valuable because um as you say you know it's not it's not a narrow field which shouldn't be a narrow field where only if you've come out of school and you've stayed on this you know mm. the specific path then you know mm. you can call yourself an accountant or you you, you can be an accountant so um in terms of in terms of the degree, so a degree is a requirement. Mm, it has to be a degree or a diploma, okay. and you have to have worked for our entry level designation. You have to have worked for at least two years in the finance, uh, in a finance department. Yeah. Uh, be vetted by your employer that okay. you have certain competencies. Oh. We do a competency assessment on you. Yeah. Uh, and if you pass that, then we give you the designation BASA. Okay. And, so in and terms and the, of, I think sorry. The important part of it, of doing that is you show them to your employer that you're actually serious in yes. developing your career in accounting. Right. Because obviously so, if you start studying from a non-accounting degree, the employer is always going to think, but are you serious? Should I promote you? Yeah. So getting a designation shows the employer and future employers that you are committed yes. to this industry. Yeah. Mm. So if I, I mean, if I study a, I mean, what, what degrees are, I think, you know, students are so used to thinking, you know, if I, if I want to be, I have to study a BCom accounting or, you know, in, in Tunisia to be comp. So what degrees, um, you know, what degrees are, are, are you talking about that, mm. that you look at? I mean, as you said, like you have, you know, you mentioned, psycho if I have a degree in psychology and I work, you know, in, in the accounts department now, mm. yeah, is that, is that, is that, is that acceptable? Is that, you know, is that what you're saying? Like any That's degree? exactly what I'm saying. Yes, wow, any degree. okay. Yeah, because okay. When, when people leave uh, the school, yeah. they really don't know what they want to do. No, it's, it's true. It's, uh, it's <laughs> a select few. And, and those guys shouldn't set the tone or the standard for the rest of us. Yeah. Which okay. I think is what's happening un uh, up until now. Very so true. it's okay not to know. That's what we're saying. It's, yeah. So if, you, if the degree is so varied, which is, mm. and I totally agree with you, um, it's, it's, not, it's not as though you're saying you need to have studied X, Y, Z, otherwise you won't be able to do it, which is cool. Right. I agree with that. But then why do you require a degree if it's not, you know, if it's not strained mm. towards the profession? What is, what is the thinking no. around you have to have a degree if it's not that? Mm -hmm. No, well, a degree, obviously, there has to be some objective measure of your commitment okay. to self-development. Right. And the degree shows us that you committed to three years or to complete the degree. Yeah. You had self-discipline to do assignments and to study. Yeah. Um, and obviously through the studying, your mind opens up and it becomes more open and liberal. Um, you become self-aware. Yeah. So that's what a degree does. Yeah. Um, Interesting. But on that entry point, even if you consider now in the, in the European Union, uh, mm. PwC and KPMG have stopped uh, requiring commerce degrees for uh, being an 
article students with them. Yeah. Uh, with the whole new fourth industrial revolution, people are suddenly realizing, but they need people that can think. Okay. Um, the accounting skills are very important, but you can learn them on the job. Yeah. Where the main criteria should be a thinking skill. Yeah. So they, they then allow people in, uh, in, in the EU, and especially yeah. the UK, without a commerce degree. Yes. Uh, but they're looking for particular personality types, yeah. uh, particular thinking skills. Yeah. And I think we're just following suit in, in, in that direction. Yeah. Obviously, if you, if you, and we're just talking about the entry level to accounting. Yeah. But, um, and you remember your, your liability and your responsibility level is very low at the entry level. Yes. Your employer invests in you and develops you and mm. trains you. Mm. Um, and I, I've met many people that studied psychology and then um, ended up doing a BCom honors, uh, even at the CTA level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, that is fantastic to have. And, and your, your students will also, well, they should know, they're, they're never going to stop studying. Uh, studying BCom will be one element of their studies. Yeah. So most of them will end up doing MBAs. Many of them will do psychology. Um, so it helps you to analyze clients. Yeah. It helps you to analyze data. Yeah. And if you think about all the financial scandals in South Africa and all the corruption, there's a reason for that. And we think it's because people over-specialize in accounting. They become technical experts and they forgot, forget that accounting is a subsector yeah. of economy. Yeah. And economy is a subsector of humanities. Yeah. So if you don't understand philosophy and psychology and economics, yeah. uh, accounting is the in, is the fourth in line. It's not. It, yeah. it never can be the primary thing. Yeah. But I think we over specialize our accountants, and when they face real business challenges and problems, yeah. um, or psychopaths in in business, <laughs> they don't have an answer. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. They can't respond, so yeah. they just accept an instruction. Yeah. Um, without thinking. So I think there's, there's some serious introspection we as accountants need to do. Mm. But I think we started by, by allowing people from different backgrounds to enter the yeah. profession because they're working here. We do realize, and as we move now up, up the corporate ladder, that your responsibilities increases. Mm. So at the moment, you become a financial manager. At that point, or if you want to become one, it's at that point that accounting as a specialist subject becomes very important. Important, yeah. So for our CBA designation, we mm. require a BCom honors uh, with specialization in accounting and, and management accounting and all the accounting related subjects. Okay. So, so our uh, liberal approach to the profession is limited to the entry level. Right. And then you need to... And then we start narrowing as you specialize. Right. What because I... at that point, you also realize, yeah. you also start to realize that um, what you actually want to do. Exactly. exactly. You, you, you don't know yet. Exactly. So is it an auditor? Is it a financial manager? Uh, yeah. Will I become a strategist? Do I want to do yeah. financial uh, analysis? Yeah. Uh, do I want to become an economist? Mm. So we, we, we don't like the, uh, the status quo approach mm. to say you have to specialize so early. prior to mm. getting employment. Mm. We think it puts people on the wrong tangent. Mm. Uh, also prevents them from earning a living quite early in their yeah. career. Because they have to first specialize. And yeah. you can't specialize if you haven't really practiced the thing. Yeah. What do you really know? You know a lot of theory, but not yeah. reality. What so there has to be a mix of, of studying and working. And as you progress in life, you study more. Yeah. And, and if the students realize that having your base, basic degrees is important, but that's mm -hmm. just the first step. Mm -hmm. You will add more and more as you go through yeah. life. Yeah. And then, then studying becomes a lifelong learning exercise. Yeah. Uh, and you become a more complete professional. Right. So for our financial manager, we require the BCom honors um, with specific subjects, as well as then if you become a financial director, mm. we say for us to give you the designation, we again follow your career development. Mm. You are likely to do your BCom honors or a uh, postgraduate. Thereafter, you would do an MBA or equivalent. Okay. And so our CFOs are guys with BCom honors they completed an MBA okay. because as you become a financial director, you move away from accounting and you yes. become a manager. Yeah. And as a CFO, you manage operations, you manage uh, strategy, mm -hmm. you manage HR, you manage IT. Um, and you leave then the accounting to the specialists, the financial yeah. manager. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. I think what I really like about that exactly, as you say, is um, someone coming out of school or, or, you know, as you say, has no life, experience or exposure which they're not expected to do 
to expect them to go into a narrow path so early is to some extent a little dangerous and a little unfair because as you say you you know you work for one or two years or you experience life a little bit and go well I thought I liked accounting but I actually don't <laughs> you know I, I prefer this or and as you get exposure to stuff it, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense to be able to make decisions as you've experienced things and then go well I've worked in the accounting department or in an accounting department for two years and I really like accounting more than I thought I would so let's mm. you know let's let's focus that and I, I think I really like the I really like the logic and I think um, I really like the fact that you know that serves it follows the reality of the situation you know as you said up front rather than force fitting you know if you want to be here you have you know this is the only way you know this is the only way to get there mm. so um, uh, realistically most of most of my students are on the CA path. So most of the students that I deal with are on the CA path. And um, so if we talk about articulation from someone who thought CA, you know, when they came out of school, obviously, they, you know, the teachers or whatever, like, oh, you're good at accounting, so you must be a CA. So for someone who got onto the CA path and is now somewhere along the path and goes, actually, this is not for me, or um, I need to, you know, I need to reassess my exposure, whatever. What are the articulations across? Can they articulate across from the CA path to, to, to the cyber path? And, and what would that look like? So the degree, the degree is fair. I think we've discussed that. So if you have a BCom degree, um, you need then the work experience for two years where your employer can give you, can give cyber an indication of your responsibilities. So, so that's, that I think we've discussed, right? So Get, take a degree and go and get your work experience and that doesn't have to be at a firm the same as your sort of psycho articles that students know right so they don't have to go to a training firm they can go and work mm. anywhere kind of thing mm. they can go work for in the council department at spa kind of thing mm. okay mm. cool so if i have then got uh if i if i did my cta or my pgda that i didn't complete in one year then I can complete the PGDA with that means that I won't be able to sit the ITC, but I will be eligible for your CBA route. Is that right? Okay. So if I've attempted CTA this year and I failed management accounting, which all of them do, <laughs> and I, you know, I decide, okay, cyber is the way to go. I can do management accounting next year. I will get my, you know, I will get the diploma. I'll get the post-grad qualification and then I will need, how much work experience do I need mm -hmm. to, to then get the CBA qualification? Because mm -hmm. then I'll have the academic, but what about the work experience? Yes, yes. Now, the, the, the CA path that most of your students are on now, they should, they should keep on that and, and complete it. I think CA is fantastic. It opens up doors. But um, sometimes life happens. Uh, your funds dry up. Your interest changes. Yeah. Uh, you get married. <laughs> or, or you want to start earning a living. Yeah. So it's then that you need to start considering alternatives. Yeah. Um, as long as you don't make the, the CA the, the dream that you always wanted to achieve. I think the focus should be on earning, being a successful human being and, uh, and, and having a stable salary and stable income and be uh, recognized in, in different areas in the department. Yeah. So it's, it's not the designation that does that. It's actually your hard work and commitment uh, to, uh, um, yeah, to self-development. So uh, most of the institutes have articulation from the CA mm -hmm. uh, study route. Uh, I specifically think of ACCA if you want to go international mm -hmm. or SEMA if you want to go more to the management accounting route. Mm -hmm. At different levels, you get exit points. Um, and then cyber is the same. So if you would complete your big comp degree and completed, let's say, three years of um, articles, mm -hmm. you would qualify either for our business accountant or our business accountant in practice, mm -hmm. which will allow you to immediately start uh, your own uh, uh, accounting firm. Yeah. If you then add another year, you would then qualify in experience. You would qualify for the CBA, wow. SA. Yeah. So uh, we require it's, it's two years for BA. Uh, it's another two years for CBA, which is four right. uh, years of experience. And then to get to the CFO level, it's another six years. Oh, so wow. In total, we yeah. require 10 years of experience to, yeah. to get the designation CFO SA. 
Right. Um, so that's the experience route. And um, yeah, we have a lot of applications of students from, from BCOMP, uh, CTA. And yeah. then we look at their career development and then assist them to plot the right designation uh, right. for what they need. Okay. Again, what I, what I like is the, the understanding that not everyone is built the same and not everyone is on the same path. And I think, you know, it's the, the nature of the CA qualification, you know, as it stands is very linear. You know, it is very, you do this, 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 and it is, you know, and that, that, I mean, I, you know, I, I did that and I, it was pretty horrible, but <laughs> no, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't regret that. I don't regret mm -hmm. that I did it. Um, but it is, it is a very specific path. It doesn't, as you say, it doesn't really take into account, uh, you know, different experiences, different exposure. And, and I have to say, um, taking a look at where the world is going, you know, you mentioned the fourth industrial revolution, people are looking for different skills. You know, a lot of the technical work, and this I think is something that students don't necessarily understand while they're still studying, the technical stuff that they focus on, you know, the very hard calculations and, the, you know, is not what's going to add value in the business world anymore because we all have very smart accounting programs, <laughs> you know, and, you know, very smart, you know, the, like computers are a lot better at these types of calculations than, than I am. Um, but the value that I can add to an organization is the decision making, as you say, the management. And um, I, I really like the fact when you spoke about financial director and, you know, and, and CFO roles, um, I think it's something that students, I know it's something students don't really understand is I think you students kind of think that a financial director or CFO role is like the ultimate accountant, you know, like that's the accountant on speed, you know, mm -hmm. but in their minds, I think they're kind of picturing that he's sitting behind a desk, mm -hmm. you know, and all she does all day is, you know, like numbers and, you know, in, impressive, you know, fi financial reporting. And, and as you say, that's not the reality at all. You know, at that level, you're bringing, you know, the entire organization together, you know, where, where the money is, which is obviously really important, but you're hundred percent right. You're dealing with people managing different departments and, you know, interrelating to different departments, making decisions. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, all, in all honesty, as, as, as much as I respect, you know, the CA profession, that's not something that's in the syllabus. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not something that's in your articles because your articles are very much around the technical stuff, you know, very, you know, like, it doesn't actually give you exposure to business decisions, to business, you know, the realities of management, entrepreneurship, uh, you know, all this, as you say, all the psychology and the humanity behind it. Um, so I think going forward, people need to understand that these skills are crucial. And whether you're doing psycho or ACCA or cyber, whatever the case is, that's something you've got to focus on. Don't mm. think that your calculation abilities are going to get you through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, career no. okay no it's very true and the the thing about the work life is when you when you choose a career you, you start specializing yeah so 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 auditors specialize in auditing yeah um and it takes a particular personality type uh, to focus on that yeah um we had a few uh, i interviewed a few candidates uh, over my career at, at cyber over the last 10 15 years and then we do in, uh, interview uh, somebody with a, that just completed the, the, the BCOM CTA, completed articles, um, and just passed the, the, the Urba board exam. But when you interview her and ask her, okay, can you do this, this, and this, then yeah. they can't. Yeah. It's so specialized. Yeah. Uh, in, in that particular case, the person did um, uh, asset audits for three years in her article. That's what right. she did, at yeah, municipality. Is, yeah. And that is so narrow. So when we ask her, can you do VAT recons, bank recons, uh, trial balance, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> journal entries? Yeah. Uh, do you know, say, uh, QuickBooks, do you know these softwares? Yeah. yeah. Um, and they, she didn't have any experience. Yeah. And that, then I realized, but um, it's not her fault, it's, it's mine, because I should have been more clear in the advertising. Now, I, yeah. I, I, I'm looking for an all-rounder that mm. can help drive my business. Mm. And, and she should have applied only in, in sp very specific roles in, in auditing. Yeah. So the students also need to realize this way their career will take them. Yeah. Um, am I going to specialize, like you said, that the highest level of an accountant, I suppose, would be in the auditing field or the IFRS yeah. specialist? Yeah. Or do I want to go more into, into management, yeah. uh, which would tend then to be our CBA or CFO? 
Right. Or do I want to be a small practitioner, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, an accountant in practice for SMEs? Yeah. Um, and obviously that field is very wide. It's an yes. unbelievably yeah. wild field. You yeah. to start off as a as a generalist accountant doing the books for SMEs, mm. but then you end up later on doing um, financial advisory work for them, yeah. improving their business decision making, getting yeah. business plans going. Yeah. Eventually, you out they outsource the whole finance department to you, and you become mm. like a virtual CFO to them. Yes, yeah. Um, and through that, you obviously meet a lot of clients. You you start partnerships with them in different business concerns. Uh, so, yeah, starting your own accounting practice, it's, it's such a wide field uh, that if you are interested in a variety of things, then, then mm -hmm. definitely go into practice. Yeah. Start small, basic, yeah. basic bookkeeping practice, and, and you end up selling insurance uh, for your clients. You end up doing business advisory services. Mm -hmm. You end up doing IT development, and a lot of the accountants are now into uh, implementing IT systems. Mm -hmm. They might not be the IT specialist, but they yeah. drive the, the project it's more project management for them yeah so it's unbelievable opportunities for accountants in practice right and again i like i like the breadth of that so um if if we take a look then at the the entrepreneurial side if if i like the idea of of starting an accounting practice obviously coming out of my degree i have no idea you know where, where to mm -hmm. start so what different what is the difference between sort of your um you know your, your cba versus your um you know your this is practice. Mm. Uh, what will you help me with, and what will I get from you in terms of experience, exposure, understanding, academics, whatever, that will help me open open my own business? So the the, the CBA is if you are wanting to be an, an accountant, an employed accountant, you're going to yes. work for one corporate. Yeah. Uh, maybe you'll start. You'll obviously do your articles, and from there decide. Um, and then you'll you'll work, let's say, three years for your first employer, then three years for the next one, uh, and well, specialize in the financial systems for a corporate, whether yeah. it'll be retail, wholesale, mm. uh, manufacturing. Uh, it depends, and that's also a decision to make. I think um, mm. once the, the sector that you work in is also important because you you won't be able to jump sectors. Yeah. Um, if you start in mining or manufacturing, then you you oh, stay exactly. there. Yeah. Because it's a it's a specialist area. Yeah. Uh, if if you're going to be employed, uh, select maybe wholesale or whatever interests you or retail, mm -hmm. uh, because that's a unique area uh, in and of by itself. Yeah. Whereas if you want to go into practice, um, it, you you uh, you're more an entrepreneur. Yeah. You're going to work with a uh, hundred or three hundred clients, or even a thousand if you if you become big. Um, and then obviously what you get there is you see a lot of things. Because you learn each and every business in, in their particular sector. Yeah. So at the end of a career, or let's say mid-career, after about 10 or 20 years of this, you you a perfect business advisor because you know what works in which industry. Yeah. And yeah. that's very that's highly valuable yeah. uh, to, to achieve. I think for your students at this stage, it's important to start thinking where they will get their articles. And I would recommend for all of them, those that want to go to corporate or practice, to do articles in an accounting firm, mm. not, not on in in a, in a corporate. Okay. The, you have to get this wide variety of experience mm. and exposure. Mm. Uh, start start doing the everything that you can in the firm, from the basic administration to the filing, uh, to um, getting your hands dirty in working paper preparation. Uh, doing uh, fixed asset orders, moving over to, to accounting inventory, uh, yeah. get out to the clients. So because that three years is, is absolute gold. Sure. It sets the tone for the rest of your career. And, and in your career, you'll refer so much back to those three years. It's yeah. unbelievable. And if you miss something, so don't, they shouldn't hop uh, firms. They should stick their three years with one firm that, and, and be selective about that firm. It should be a firm the best firms to do articles with is the, is the mid-tier, mid-sized firms because they have big clients as well as small, as well as a variety. Yeah. If you go to the bigger PWCs, the lawyers, it's, it's good for your CV, but you only do one thing. Yeah. Um, your exposure will be very limited because yeah. those firms specialize. Yeah. If you go to small, you won't get bigger firm, bigger company experiences. Yeah. And then commit to that three years. It's, it's, it's going to carry you through for the rest of your life. Yeah. So someone who uh, has done or is doing going into audit articles that is saying, I don't want to do 
audit articles because I don't want to be an auditor. Mm. Um, how how do you how do you respond to to that? Are audit articles valuable for you if you want to be a? I think at the start of the career, you shouldn't that those words shouldn't come out of your mouth. You shouldn't <laughs> say there's something I don't want to do. Those three years, you do everything. Yeah. And and working in an audit practice, a medium size that gives you yeah. exposure to many things. As I said, yeah, uh, yeah, commit to that. Uh, yeah. Do the audit thing yeah. because even if you end up being a financial director one day. You need to know how systems work. You so need much. to be, yeah. because of the, all of it, will, it'll pop up. Um, mm-hmm. You need to learn from the, and obviously make a lot of mistakes. You, somebody else is paying you to make mistakes. <laughs> do that. Because <laughs> once you're a financial director, it's, let's say you're earning four or five million a year and you make a mistake, then that company suffers half a, half a billion rand loss. Yeah. So don't make the mistake at, the, at that level. Then it's too late. Yeah, Make the mistake in, yeah. in your articles. Yeah. That's what it's yeah. there for. And yeah. that's why they only pay you a small amount because you, you're carrying a risk. But, <laughs> but enjoy it and do it. Yeah. So you don't get embarrassed later. Yeah. I think what I, what I, what I say to my students about, you know, about auditing is that um, for, for me, doing audit articles is like having a backstage pass into a whole bunch of businesses um, you know, at a whole bunch of levels that you know having access to discussions management level systems um, that in a lot of cases the the employees themselves wouldn't have access to that you know the mm. fact that as a junior mm. uh, as a junior audit clerk you'll sit in a meeting with a financial manager and discuss what really happened during the year um, you know there's a lot of people in the company have no idea about that type of thing you know and they wouldn't have access to that type of information so uh, I totally agree and I think it's it's it's, it's definitely a, um, it's a concern for a lot of students who think if I'm studying auditing, I'm going to be an auditor. If I do audit articles, I'm only going to be an auditor because they don't, they don't understand that the, the most important, for me, the most important part of your auditing uh, experience is the behind the scenes exposure to decisions, management style systems, what's gone right, what's gone wrong. Um, and I agree with you at mid tier firms, you know, you, you're shifting from one company to the other every two or three months mm. um, in diff- probably in different industries, different sizes, different systems, different. Whereas at the bigger firms by nature and because of what they do, as you say, you're in one industry, you're specializing because you have to on that, you know, and then, and that's, you know, that's, mm. that's the nature. That's the nature of no, the game. I agree with you. Yeah. So I think the, that, yeah. the, the auditing experience gives you also a systematic thinking. Very true. And risk how, 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 how transactions flow and how you need to record that and, and keep, keep track of them, keep evidence of them. Mm. Uh, those working papers compilation, it, it, it forces your mind to think in a certain way. Yeah. When, when you get to business and everything is fast moving and changing all the time, the yeah. thing that you fall back on is that system thinking. Very true. To say, no, I don't, I don't need to get a panic or, there's not really chaos here. Yeah. I'm just going to plot it into the system. I know how it works. And then, yeah. and, and that helps for obviously for career development and, and future employment. Yeah. Yeah. So if like you, you said um, cyber kind of reinvented itself in, in around 2012. So in, in terms of that, how do you find employers respond to, to, to cyber from students perspective? Again, you know, students' biggest worry is, am I going to find a job with this? You know, if I do ACCA, will I find a job? If I do SEMA, will I find a job? So um, in terms of explaining to students, how, do, how well does the corporate world understand the value of, of cyber? And, you know, how does, how does the employment world perceive the, the cyber qualification? Mm. Um, what happened in the last couple of years is South Africa went through a lot of scandals in financial reporting. Yeah. And um, the whole C8 brand has really taken a knock and people are now not putting them on a pedestal anymore. Yeah. So to give uh, recognition to them, they, they were dominant in our industry for many, many years. Yeah. Uh, and that actually prevented more variety from developing. Uh, I have high regard for ACCA and SEMA. They they world renowned international organisations. Yeah. Um, but they just couldn't uh, flourish uh, in South Africa. Yeah. But with these scandals and and suddenly people realised, but 
it doesn't matter what your designation is. If you are thinking in a certain way, you're going to make mistakes. Mm. So employers are now looking much wider um, across all the professional associations. Uh, and, and they're looking and, and considering, but what value will this person provide to, to our company? Mm. So the designation in the past, I suppose, opened up doors for you. Uh, it's now much more difficult. Mm. You, you have to have the designation as the, as the entry point. But mm. I think it's now more to do with the person's personality uh, and self-development. How involved with you in, in, in uh, social activities? Mm. How involved with you with volunteering activities? Mm. Um, what are you doing other than just studying? Mm. So those things are, are now much more important than a specific designation. Yeah. So employers are recognized cyber. Um, we recognize in legislation. So our designations are registered with the South African Qualifications Authority, right. uh, which is a recent body created by government mm. to standardize uh, accounting designations mm. so that everybody can understand what it means and what you require to, to meet them. Yeah. So we get audited by them, uh, all of the professional bodies uh, annually to see is our quality still there and, right. and do we provide value. Yeah. Um, so I suppose that is now a new consideration for employers to say, yeah. but if all of them are registered with SACWA and yeah. accredited by SACWA, then they have equal value. Yeah, that's uh, and it does provide now more um, opportunity for uh, employers to yeah. make a better decision on who they want to, to work with them. Yeah, right. You, you also mentioned at the beginning of our chat, your um, international, your sort of international partners. Who, who, are, who are you working with internationally? So we've got two main uh, international partners. Um, the one is uh, SEMA, the Chartered right. Institute of Management Accountants. Okay. We have an MOU with them. Right. So all of our four designations articulate into different levels of SEMA. Okay. Um, and then you get exemptions for, for underlying requirements of SEMA. So right. we're very uh, happy with that development. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you start off with cyber and if you want to go international into management accounting, you articulate into SEMA, you right. get exemption for a number of the exams. Yeah. And that sets you off on a path and you can work worldwide. Right. So the second entity is more specifically for our CFO SA designation. Right. The entity is called the International Association of Finance Executive Institute. And they are an um, association of associations. So many countries have CFO uh, bodies, associations, yeah. where the CFOs yeah. in the country belong to. Mm -hmm. And then... Those entities, national entities, belong to IFI, which is international. Okay, so that's what. Uh, and then yeah. IFI coordinates our activities, represents us at various forums, the World Bank and, and IFAC. Right. And so the voice of the CFO is now also heard in international uh, okay. arena. Right. Uh, yeah. So and with the IFI relationship, our members, the CFOs, can now work well in whichever country IFI is present. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so yeah. So the the and and that that again is very similar to, uh, very similar to, Psyker. Even it's it's recognised internationally by different bodies. Mm. So you know, if you go overseas, it's not Psyker doesn't have offices or whatever overseas. You're um, you're going to be recognised by different professional bodies and articulate into that. And I, again, I, I, I'm just drawing that parallel because I think most, you know, most of my students understand how cycle works, and I want to use that as an analogy for that. Exactly. No, <laughs> they, understand, right. you know, yes. they understand how uh, how how that works. So you you mentioned the competency assessments, which I, I think are, are are very valuable. What do those What do those look like? And are they subject based? Um, how many of them are there? So, you know, what kind of competency assessments am I going to have to go through at, mm. at, at different levels? And how, like, how hard are they? And what are they? So they, they, are they they, they're outcomes based. So they right. want to measure whether you've achieved a certain skill uh, in your career. Right. Uh, the other word, I suppose, for them is logbooks, which the students might be more familiar with. Like a portfolio so, of evidence kind of thing. A portfolio of evidence. Yeah. Okay. So we, we got our... Um, competency framework uh, based on the research that was done uh, in Canada about the competency of a CFO. Right. Uh, it was interesting, the, the, the competence, the research was called um, moving from CA to CFO. <laughs> and yeah. we just realized, but, and, and, and the research found that as you develop into management, you move away from the CA designation or the CA qualification yeah. into management. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we took those uh, competency frameworks. It's available on our website. Right. Um, another one of our website is cfotalks.com. Okay. That is where we interview global CFOs. Uh, they yeah. share their experiences. So I suppose the students will find might find that very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I'll put a to link see in. what actually a student now do, a person does once he's a CFO. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's cfotalks.com. Yeah. On that side, we list our 34 competencies. Right. Uh, and they relate to strategy, operations, human resources, and, and, and then the accounting skills. But they, we don't re-examine what the university examined. Right. We, see, we examine or assess what you now achieved in your career development, your, yeah. your experience, yeah. which we think is much more valuable. And really? we then act as an objective verifier okay. uh, of that competency. So right. that if you apply, then and the next employer is assured that those competencies were actually achieved. Have been proven. And so that's not through, that through an exam process or through discussions with my employer? Like, yes. like a lot of them. Them. Yeah. yeah, it's both of them. Okay. So we'll contact the employer and discuss with them. We'll ask you to complete an uh, ex uh, examination by experience, which is a form, and you mark down the competencies that you say you achieved. We verify them in line with your CV and the discussion with the employer. And in certain cases, depending on what your career development was, we might ask you to do a verbal assessment, a verbal exam. Ooh. Yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> and then we get an experienced person on the equivalent level that of the designation you're applying for, and he's going to ask you some probing questions. Oof. Now, uh, you would uh, very quickly realize if a person is is uh, not telling the truth, you can't hide experience. <laughs> no. Yeah. I think I, I would actually be more nervous with a discussion-based assessment that way than writing you know at least i have like the opportunity to think about it um I, I, and and i took from the other side of the table i totally agree with you i you know i can spend five minutes with somebody talking mm. to them and I, I have a much better understanding of what you genuinely understand you know mm. what you genuinely genuinely know mm. what i find quite interesting about um the stuff we're talking about is that um i get the feeling that cyber spends more time individually with each um, you know, with each of your members to get them where they need to be. So, you know, what it sounds like is if, if, if I'm on that route, you know, and I move from, from the different designations, I'm going to have a lot of interaction with you, like more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, because you have to assess what I'm capable of individually. You're talking to my employer. Um, and I think, again, you know, as you say, as you said, right up front, that's, that speaks to the fact that you're not forcing people into a specific category you're taking the qualifications or the skills and going how do we get you know how do we upskill you to where you need to be in order mm. to add the maximum value for whatever it is that you're wanting mm. you know that that you're wanting to do um, mm. as far as CPD is concerned if mm. once I am you know once, once I have one of those designations what are my do I, you know what are my CPD requirements and how does that work yeah, so all of the professional bodies subscribe to the same CPD standards that's issued right. by IFAC, which is the International Federation of Accountants, and that requires 40 hours of uh, CPD um, annually. Half of that is structured, half of them unstructured. Unstructured just means you've self-developed, you read yeah. articles, yeah. and you keep track of that. And structured is you attended a, um, a webinar and you attended a conference. Something you so, can prove, yeah. yeah, so it's 40 hours. Uh, but we vary according to the designation. I think it's less for our BAs right. uh, and more for our BAPs. Yeah. Because the distinction is, as a, a corporate accountant, you work under supervision from your employer. Mm. If you're in practice, you work with, uh, you directly work with clients. Mm. So the risk is higher there. Mm. So we do then require more CPD hours from them. Okay. And the industry is now moving to an outcomes-based uh, CPD model, yeah. where we actually test your knowledge after attending the event so mm -hmm. there's some i suppose that's where we we believe technical skills should be obtained yeah through cpd because right. our assessments competency assessments to get a designation isn't uh, skills based or, or theoretically yeah. uh, examination based like you would do at the um, uh, your bcom yeah where we then help you further develop is through cpd right so cpds are very uh, technically focused Right. The latest IFRS standards or updates, the latest auditing standards or updates, the latest tax mm -hmm. uh, updates and changes, and then we test those. Right. So, um, 
so we've got a mixed model. You, mm -hmm. We see that you develop your academic theory and, and knowledge at university. Mm -hmm. When you then get your experience, you then apply with us. We assess that experience mm -hmm. uh, through various interactions with you and your employer. And then we realize, but in your career, you're still going to need technical advancement and development. And that's where the CPD comes in. Right. So then we, our technical exam assessment then kick in again. Okay. I th again, I think that's, that's quite valuable. And then that, that also means that I can structure my CPD according to what I need on it. If yeah. I don't touch taxation in my job, mm -hmm. I don't need to go ru you know, running around and getting yeah. very high level uh, yeah. you know, tax, tax CPD. I'll focus on, you know, I'll, I'll exactly. structure my CPD according to what, you know, according to what, yes. what I need. Um, in terms of, you know, your, your experience, what do you, what do you want students who are coming out of matric, um, you know, what do you want them to understand about, about, about cyber, but also about the, you know, the, the accounting and, and the finance world in, in general, understanding the mindset of someone who's just left matric and is, if they were good at, you know, we know if they're good at math, science and or accounting, they're generally like, okay, go and do a BCom, you know, or go and do a, you know, a BCom accounting. What do you want these guys to, 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 to know that you know they kind of don't know? <laughs> um, look, I want them to know that they don't know anything. And it's okay not to know anything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, sit back, uh, enjoy the ride. Let, yeah. your, let your mind and the universe develop you you were born with a mind that is capable of understanding things mm. um, so trust that mm. um, enjoy the studies enjoy the articles don't be too ambitious uh, take in as much as you can and don't criticize yourself uh, if, if it takes longer to understand a thing or maybe your articles is now longer mm. eventually your career uh, develops uh, in the direction it should be so mm. um, yeah, I suppose my advice would be stay calm Stay committed yeah. uh, and don't, don't uh, over criticize yourself. Your, yeah. your career will uh, develop in its own course. Yeah. So would you, would you then suggest to someone coming out of school at the moment that they should get some work experience before they start studying or a, they should start uh, yeah. studying straight away and then kind of re realign their studying? Yeah, I, I don't think there's, a, there's not a clear answer on that. It depends yeah. on your circumstances. Um, some, some mornings I wake up and I think, no, people must work first and then study. Yeah. Other times I think, no, let them study because it opens up their minds and then they'll get the experience later. Yeah. So it depends on your circumstances yeah. uh, and your personality, I suppose. What, what is good for you at that point in time? Yeah. As long as you don't get uh, anxious about the whole thing. Uh, yeah. If you have to go and work, it's not as if other people are now running ahead. Yes. Uh, you can always come and study later. Um, yeah. I think the whole work environment has become much more flexible mm. and much more acceptable about age. Um, mm. We see people working until 70s in the, in the profession. It, it doesn't stop and, and then go and study when they yeah. are very old. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that whole thing has changed. Yeah. So it's about you and your career and what's good for you. Uh, I agree. And when you come out of school, you don't need to have a 10 year plan. I think we, there's uh, a lot of, I pick up a lot of fear from people of like, I don't know what to do and I'm scared because I don't know what my dream yeah. career is or I don't yeah. have a 10 year plan. And as you say, you know, you come out of school with all due respect, you've got no life experience. You've got no exposure to business. You've got no exposure to work. So how are you supposed to have a 10 year plan? And I agree with you. I'm ex in exactly the same position. Um, I'm, I, I, I sway back and forth between feeling like people should come out of school and start working so that they can get a, a taste of what the real world is. And I'm, I'm not even particularly fussy about what they work in. I just think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of value to understanding how the world really works. Exactly. Taxes, yeah. You know, what, I, what, what value is that, that you add and then start thinking about, okay, what, you know, what do I want to study? And then other times I'm like, just start studying straight away and get it room done with, you know, and get mm. like, studying so I, I agree with you i'm also in two minds i'm, I'm not i don't and, think and right. traveling as long as you so it's yeah. not the end goal that's important it's that journey that you're on yeah as long as you are a hard worker uh, committed yeah. Uh, yeah. open to new information and and ticking off the studying getting those subjects under your belt um and working in in, in early on in, in different student uh, jobs mm. and getting that exposure 
Mm. And, and just know that you're on a journey to somewhere and, and enjoy that journey while you're on it. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's advice then for someone coming out of school. For someone who thought that they wanted to be a CA and then moved through the process to some extent, maybe they finished their degree, maybe they're halfway through their, their PGDA and they're going, actually, this is not for me. Mm. Um, understanding the very heavy emotional investment that that person has put in because of the nature of, of the path um, and the feeling that if I move away from the CA path, I'll be giving up. My career is going to be a mess. Uh, I won't get employment because this is, you know, definitely, mm. this is the fear that I pick up from students. You know, I've, I've gone halfway through my, just, I don't want this anymore, <laughs> but I feel like I have to do it because otherwise my career is going to be a mess. What would you say to, to students that are sitting in that, people that are sitting in that position at the moment? Look, it's a, it's a very uh, individual question. Mm. So it might be that you're just going through a slump psychologically and you're not feeling well. Uh, work through the slump and, and finish the CA. Mm. It might be that you fundamentally realize that you don't want to be on this route. Mm. You want to start working, then, then select that. Mm. Um, there's a lot of marketing fluff behind the CA uh, designation. And obviously, as institutes, and I include Cyber in that, we would want the student to believe that you need this designation. Mm. Uh, otherwise, uh, the world will end. <laughs> but that is marketing stuff. I, I always use this example of um, Coca-Cola. When you watch those advertisements on on the TV, all the all the it's always young young people, always happy and and they yeah. they they're healthy, they thin, they've got the <laughs> whitest teeth. But Coke doesn't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get that from Coca-Cola. That's so true. No. So which which is fair? It's marketing. Yeah. So just be aware. It's marketing. Your life won't end. Uh, yeah. It's your development that's important and, and the things that you learn and what value can yeah. you bring other people. It always yeah. comes back to that. If yeah. you can add value to somebody else's life, you become, um, you want more of you. Yeah. And, and, and that determines success. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think in, in terms of what we're finding, you know, where we are now versus, you know, 20 years ago, in all honesty, um, the value of a, I'm going to, I'm going to use the word messy journey, you know, one where you're, you're forced to realign, rethink, adjust, process, da, 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 in a okay, way is normal. more valuable. Yeah, it is much more normal now than it has been in the past. And I think it's, okay. it's also more valuable because you've been forced to adjust, consider circumstances, uh, you know, realign, really think the self-awareness, psychology behind that, et cetera, et cetera. And that process that mental process is going to be far more valuable to you going forward because that's what the world is needing at the moment you know people exactly think, right. realign adjust change you know um, adapt to different situations and someone who's had a perfect clean journey where they haven't had to do that you know they haven't had to go through that psychological process they haven't had the self-doubt they haven't had the worry they haven't had to think about and in to really interrogate their decision making they don't understand that process. You know, they, they're going to be, a, it's going to be a lot harder for them to adjust as the world mm. changes. They're like, they're going to cling on to what they know. Exactly. Um, so, you know, a lot of students are kind of like, oh, you know, my journey is a mess and therefore I'm not going to be successful. Um, and to some extent, it's actually becoming a bit of a competitive advantage on its own. It is. It does. <laughs> You're right. It's exactly that. Yeah, it's strange um, how the universe works, but it's exactly that. Yeah, yeah, I, I find you know my my journey was was a mess. You know, everyone who who knows my journey, like it was a mess. You know, it took me eleven years to qualify. I did work, you know, before before I started studying, etc. But I find it incredibly valuable because you know the experiences and the tough stuff that I had to fight along the way created part of my personality and part of the stuff that I'm able to do now that I never would have done if it was all nice and clean the way I wanted it. You know, I was very bitter and resentful about these people that had this beautiful full-time studying and this great career, you know, everything was nice and clean, but I realized the value of the struggles and the value of the challenges. I wouldn't have, you can't get that out of the textbook. No, you can't. <laughs> you no, exactly right. You and your, eventually your employers and your clients will see that. And that's yeah. what they will appreciate. The more human you become, the more uh, your opportunity uh, is given to you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I think if there's, if there's anything else about the, the qualification process, you know, the profession, et cetera, I'm going to put quite a lot of links to, to you know, to, to sites and, to, you know, the, the CFO talks, I think it's going to be quite valuable as well. I'll put all of those links in, in the discussion. Um, but then, you know, for, for students and for people that are, that are watching this, if there's other questions that you have, 
um, you know, and stuff that we haven't covered, uh, you know, we can revisit, you know, we can revisit this conversation mm. and, and pick up, you know, pick up different discussion points that, you know, that people have and different, different questions that people have. So, um, yeah, I think uh, from, from my perspective, that's, you know, that's what I wanted to discuss to, to today with you. Um, do you have any, any, any last words or motivation for those students who are currently studying um, and going through the yeah, process? Um, so, um, yeah, just before we started recording this uh, conversation of ours, you and I had a conversation yes. about the business you're doing. Yes. And I think that's the most amazing offer that you have for the students. And uh, for, to all your students, you're at the right place. Um, your career will, with the information you're gaining from this platform, yeah, uh, yeah, you you will pass your exams. It will be a success. <laughs> so I just want to thank you for the effort you're putting in in developing oh, so. students it. for South Africa, because yeah. without people like you and the students studying with you, uh, obviously there won't be a cyber, and we won't have an economy. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. I, I appreciate that. I think um, yeah. I, I I just people need more information. And it's a lot easier said than done. There's so much information online, but it's not necessarily targeted mm -hmm. towards what people are genuinely struggling. It's, it's a lot yeah. harder to find the right information than it, than it needs to be, or than it <laughs> feels like it should be. So yeah, thank you. And, and I look forward to, to, to many more discussions and, and interactions between us. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoyed it.